even within the seemingly most unacceptable and painful situation is concealed a deeper good and within every disaster is contained the seed of grace throughout history there have been women and men who in the face of great loss illness imprisonment or impending death accepted the seemingly unacceptable and thus found the peace that passed all the understanding acceptance of the unacceptable is a greatest source of grace in this world it's been quite some time since i've uploaded any video on my youtube channel to be honest a lot of things have happened in these past couple of months as i walk down the memory lane i'm filled with an abundance of emotions that run haywire in the depths of my soul time and tide have changed so many things that i don't know whether i should be awestruck or miserable in every fleeting moment my existence seems to lose its purpose i'm living breathing and going about my life but there is a deep sense of disconnect from my inner being when you know who you are there is an abiding alive sense of peace you could call it joy because that's what joy is vibrantly alive peace it is the joy of knowing yourself as the very life essence before life takes on form that is the joy of being of being who you truly are it's been quite some time since i felt the swift breeze brush against my skin since the feeling of belonging in the stillness of nature i haven't felt that freedom of just being myself there was a point of time in my life where i used to be happy in the now they all used to say i was happy as a little kid i don't know now who is this person they all talk about to be honest i haven't felt what's it like to be happy from within to just be happy in the now when you are young there's a sense of peace and calmness in whatever you think the world say your actions are tender the same way as your soul there are quite a bunch of memories which bring joy to my soul there's a sense of knowing that once upon a time i too used to enjoy life to the fullest i have always believed that it is of great importance to look in the past but if you stay there for too long you are bound to drown i have for certainly drowned to such an extent that no one can reach these depths and i'm not asking anyone to save me as well no matter what someone cannot save others from themselves it's been years since my soul has actually seen the light i have drowned to such an extent that these depths have become my home they have become a part of me a part which i can never separate from my inner being these depths have become my reality i don't know if i'm right or wrong to be so deep rootedly attached with my past but what i know for certain is this that i have learned a lot from it it has become a source of my greatest strength but sometimes strength can be dangerous it is only now that i've realized this that i have never knew about how it was to be weak these past 3 years have shown me how weak i have been all this while i have always overlooked the side of me which had been hurt hence when it dawned upon me about the extent of my suffering i started breaking down leave one wound unhealed and you will be unaware of what's coming for you leave many wounds unhealed untouched and overlook and you will repent it for your lifetime I always followed what I saw others do that is get over the hurting and go on about your life it was too late i guess until i realized what it was to actually acknowledge and let the pain suffering and hurting seep into your veins no one had taught me how to save my soul from letting the pain inflict a fatal wound it was too late until i realized that i was consumed with venom I should have been attentive in order to see all those red flags all those times when i believed i'd got over the pain and suffering i should have had given it a second thought 
I should have had worked upon getting better then and there itself. I should have acknowledged that I was hurting and suffering so that I could have been better today. Trust me when I say this that it takes tremendous amount of courage to confess, accept and acknowledge when you are broken from within. I should have asked for help when I was suffering. Everyone needs somebody. But I was taught to take care of myself and so should everyone. Hence I did what I had to. We forget small little things that need to be looked at. We forget along the way to take care of ourselves. We forget or deny to take someone's hand when we need it the most. But this world is a birthplace to various kind of people who have different thought process and none of them are the same. Is suffering really necessary? Yes and no. If you had not suffered as you have, there would have been no depth to you as a human being, no humility, no compassion. You would not be reading this now. Suffering cracks open a shell of ego and there comes a point where it has served its purpose. If you believe I'm ranting about my suffering, misery and pain, then I must say that you are very wrong. There's always a reason, a purpose behind what I say and do. I know it's a lot to take in, but that's what happens when you don't let everything out. When I first started talking about what I had been through and what I had become, I wasn't hesitant. I let my innermost thoughts, fears, pain, happiness flow like an untamed river. But slowly and gradually, I stopped because I realized people had a certain limit till where they could tolerate me and my words. There are very few who could do that. What I can say is that I have always learned something about me by losing someone who truly meant something to me. I have lost a lot more than I have gained. The fear of losing someone from my life used to always run deep within my veins. It was only when I started losing people from my life that I realized this fear was abnormal. Loss taught me a lot about the fear, but this fear was there ever since I was born. Loss only increased the gravity and power of the fear. People did comfort me then, and they still do, but there's nothing anyone can do to change that part of me. This fear can never go away. And I don't know if it's a sad truth or just a harsh reality that needs to be accepted. This fear taught me that the world is either black or white and there's no grey area in my life. The same applies to the people in those who are a part of my life. Those who hurt me to the core, I cut them off root and stem. I know I should have given them second chances. Because a lot of people may have given me second chances as well. That's what my psychologist says. But at the same time, she did mention that I cannot change the root core of myself. I wish I could look past the hurting, but I just couldn't. Hence, I had to let them go. I'm absolutely aware that my actions have consequences. Hence, when I cut off, I knew I hurted a lot of people. No amount of apologies can take back the hurting. But I did what I had to. I don't know who's the bad person. Those who broke my heart or me who cut them off completely. Due to the fear of abandonment, there were times where I left people before they could leave me. This was my coping mechanism as well as this was something which I used to do since the beginning of time. That fear made me so paranoid, hence it affected all my relations. Like I mentioned before, when people used to hurt me, I always thought of absolute worse, which was them leaving me or me cutting them off from my life forever. I couldn't ignore the red flags and imperfections. Expectations were another big thing which used to induce a very excruciating pain. People tend to be uncomfortable with endings because every ending is a little death. It tends to be a deep loss. 
you feel diminished in your sense of who you are. There may also be a certain disorientation at times. Without this, who am I? When the experience of having someone by your side comes to an end, it often leaves behind a feeling of emptiness that most people try hard not to feel not to face. A form that appeared in your consciousness as that experience dissolves. It leaves a hole, so to speak, in the fabric of your very existence. To be honest, parts of me died when I lost those who were always there beside me. I lost them due to the fear of abandonment. Those people who had always given me their hand when I needed support. Those whom I called my family. Those who were a part of my soul. Those who were my horcrux. It's not pain, it's death that I suffered back then. Bring awareness to the many subtle sounds of nature. The rustling of leaves in the wind, raindrops falling, the humming of an insect, the first bird song at dawn. Give yourself completely to the act of listening. Beyond the sounds, there is something greater, a sacredness that cannot be understood through thought. Only when you are still inside do you have the access to the realm of stillness that rocks, plants and animals inhabit. The tree, the flower, the bird, the rocks are unaware of their own beauty and sacredness. Nature can bring you to, di- to this stillness. That is its gift for you. When you perceive and join with nature in the field of stillness, that field becomes permeated with your awareness. That is your gift to nature. Through you, nature becomes aware of itself. Nature has been waiting for you, as it were, for millions of years. The plant that you have in your home, have you truly looked at it? Have you allowed that familiar yet mysterious being we call plant to teach you its secrets? Have you noticed how deeply peaceful it is? How it's surrounded by a field of stillness? The moment you become aware of plant's emanation of stillness and peace, that plant becomes your teacher. I thrive in nature and whatever it has to offer. I was always the one who used to be drawn towards the smallest little details which others used to often ignore when it came to viewing nature and its beauty. There was a deep kind of a connection with plants animals, this universe, and the synergy between everything that exists. But it all faded gradually. Now there's a deep sense of a disconnect from whatever I was passionate about. From gardening, to baking, painting, creating YouTube videos, and what not. I tried hard to revive my lost self, the one who used to enjoy dipping feet in the river stream. The one who used to go on solo trips. The one who used to wander and explore in the nature's grasp. There always was a deep void in me which I had always tried to fill with my dreams, passionate projects, hobbies and various other things that I loved. But it's like a sink, no matter what you try to feed it, with nothing stays in it, everything is lost. My soul actually never had an endoskeleton to support itself, hence it always remained collapsed, thus creating a big giant void. It was a very panic inducing feeling. It's a harsh reality that I accepted recently, having this great giant void right in the center of my soul. There were many truths which I tried to ignore and brush under the carpet, but I just couldn't. Since the beginning of time, I had a distorted sense of self-image. I never really faced who I truly was. I lacked that stability. I always felt worthless, undeserving, cognitively fatalistic and empty. I was never actually comfortable being myself. I always felt there was something deeply missing. Loving just the way I was, was very hard. Accepting myself was even harder. My identity was always disturbed. My emotional state had always been abnormally unstable. It always fluctuated hour to hour. I had always been a very impulsive person. I used to always act out without thinking about the ramifications. 
No matter how many band-aids I put on myself, the core of my soul was always disrupted. From my career choices to my interests, hobbies, passions, dreams, and everything my thoughts could ever fathom, all were various ways I came up with to soothe my soul. I got addicted as a result of getting over the fact that there was a void in me which was always going to be empty. I started binge eating in the year 2018. I wanted to ignore my pain, suffering, fear, depression and everything I was going through. I ate even though I felt full cuz I felt empty from within. Before that, I used to starve myself. But that changed everything when I went through a very bad breakup and another when I lost my pet dog on my lap. She took her last breath and I watched felt and sensed death. that triggered my fear of abandonment cause i truly loved both of them and losing both was something i had never thought in my wildest of dreams if everything changed after that experience i had lost a big part of my soul i put on weight and i gave up on starving myself instead i ate my way out Another thing I used to always feel was a tidal wave of mood swings which used to change rapidly. I could never gain a control over them. My moods were all over the map. I used to overreact to every single thing to such an extent that many would consider it to be abnormal. I used to feel all kind of emotions in their extremes. It was so hard to feel everything that it used to become too much for me to handle myself. I was so used to feeling everything in extreme that at times I used to feel like it was normal as well. I always felt that I had a very thin skin, which is why slightest little detail would affect me deeply. I was very hypersensitive to each and every minute little detail. I always felt like a person with 3 to 4 degree burns. At times it was so so hard frustrating and exhausting that I just wanted to feel numb for some time. Being over sensitive was one thing but with that I always was an overthinker my ways and patterns of overthinking and over analyzing each and every situation were so out of the box and unfathomable that there wasn't ever a point of time where my brain or my soul had felt st- still and calm anger was something which was never in my control most used to consider me the sweetest child and someone who was so comforting and they still do that's why when a few people saw my anger they were extremely blown away my anger knows no bounds the sheer intensity of it wrecks anyone who comes in contact with it but more than anyone it completely shatters me cuz i deeply regret it with this i used to always feel deeply remorseful that the people whom i love the most are going to abandon me now due to my volcanic outburst and thus it tied up with the fear of abandonment it became a cycle so many things used to happen at once that i used to die every single time i was hurt either by others or from myself the trauma and suffering really chipped me off to such an extent that i never felt comfortable on my own i just wanted to escape myself The first time I had thought of harming myself was when I was around 10 to 11 years. Since then that thought just kept escalating. It's only recently that I realized how helpless and afraid I am of my own self at times. My thoughts, the past, the trauma and everything has done an irreparable damage to my soul. I have never spoken about this but I have been abused and bullied which made my childhood quite traumatic there were other things that also went but I won't talk about them as of now like I mentioned before it took a lot of things to make me come to a decision of committing suicide whenever someone whom I loved used to walk away or was erased from the picture I used to think of harming myself cuz I didn't want to face myself I died so many deaths while I was living that suicide actually felt like an easier option. For most it's an unfathomable decision. The greatest war which I have ever been at is with myself and trust me there came several times where I just wanted to give up.
I was fed up of just being myself. I wasn't being covered when I considered giving up on living. I considered taking that step cause I wanted the suffering and misery to end. I had grown fearful of my own self cause of everything that used to happen internally. Those voices in my head and the intensity with which I used to feel each and every single thing was very dangerous. It was something which no one could have survived. Up until this day, I have survived a lot and I know I will have to survive a lot of things in the future given my mental condition. Last year, I got my answer which I had been looking for. Why I was the way I was. I was diagnosed with BPD that is borderline personality disorder. With that, there were a few traits of bipolar disorder major PTSD that is post-traumatic stress disorder, severe anxiety issue, major depression or as it is termed clinical depression. It was quite a lot to take in and it took me quite some time to process what I was diagnosed with. I was relieved though cause now I knew whatever I was going through had a name. There wasn't just something which I wasn't aware of. I knew whatever I was going through was something very serious and now I had some research and evidence as well as some references to support what I had been through. After getting to know about my disorder and everything else that had been brewing up along with it, I really thought things would get easier, but they didn't. The more I educated myself about my condition, the more paranoid I got cause there's a lot of fear debate, opinions, conjecture, and negativity that surrounds this disorder. I had consulted quite a few psychologists and psychiatrists, but none had a definite answer. Most had termed it as depression, but I knew there was something more to my mental state and well-being. I knew something was really off. One of the psychiatrists finally came to a conclusion that I might be having a personality disorder. She made me consult a psychologist with whom I gave a psychometric test through which we were able to figure out regarding my mental condition. As of today, in this fleeting moment, I can say I know who I am somehow. All these years, I have been through so much shit that somehow I am relieved today. I haven't changed, I still go through all those highs and lows which a borderline personality disorder person goes through. At times it is very peaceful, at times it is a complete storm that I am surrounded with. I am on medication as of now and I am taking much needed therapy as well. There's a lot of stigma and negativity which surrounds this personality disorder. What I've witnessed till today is that people are very apprehensive, ignorant, fearful to accept those who have this personality disorder. There are some even who don't take this type of disorder seriously. What I'm diagnosed with is no joke, but that doesn't define who I am as a human being. In spite of mentioning everything that is flawed about myself, I still have a lot of silver linings. I know there are many people out there who like to avoid those who are diagnosed with personality di disorders or other mental illness cause of the way we are. But let me tell you this, that the people those who are diagnosed with borderline personality disorder are some of the most intelligent, creative, loving, trustworthy and affectionate, affectionate people you will ever meet. I am the way I am and I am unapologetic about it. I am not ashamed of anything. I have always considered myself as an ocean. I am a temperamental ocean, enormous and pulled in infinite directions. My ocean loves just as deeply as it hates. My ocean buries its history and vomits it up on the shore. I am a big giant tree whose roots can't be untangled. I am the darkest, deepest and brightest color of red that resembles the fire but at the same time I am the most prismatic and vibrant collection of colors you'll ever see. I am broken to the core in million little pieces but each piece has a beating heart. My soul is untamed, wild and full of surprises.
I've been through a lot of destruction internally but I still have some hope left here and there. I'm learning to live alone cause up until a few months ago I had my best friends and parents to take care of me. I've accepted that I have a disorder with few other illnesses as well but now I have to start loving myself. I need to take care of myself and be at peace with however I am. It's a very tough journey ahead. Up until now, I was always being taken care of by my loved ones during all my tough phases. Now I want to learn to love myself cuz I never have. I always loved myself through others' perspective, opinions and actions. I need to learn to look at myself in the mirror and say that I accept you and you deserve to be happy. As of today, I only have one best friend, Blossom, who's my pet dog. my parents and a few other relatives whom i can approach whenever i need help they are actually the only people left in my life whom i can count on and i really don't want to lose them in any case i don't know whether i'll be able to open the doors for myself or for anyone new or old cause as of now i really want to heal myself i want to get better the other reason i don't want to let anyone in is because i don't want to hurt anyone nor do i want to become a burden and i definitely don't want to hurt myself again speaking about love i did have a dream of marrying the person i love having babies building a home of our dreams having two dogs and living happily but as of today i don't know if that is written in my destiny as of today As heartbreaking as it sounds, I don't know if I'm fit to be in a relationship or to be even loved. I love love and I am an absolute romantic person you'll ever meet. I fall in love hard and fast, but sometimes I feel you can't have it all in life. I'm scared of coming in contact with love because of the sheer trauma with which it affects me even if one single thing goes wrong. I get surrounded by a storm which no one can pass through or handle. I can't put someone through that misery and pain. My heart has locked itself behind bars even though it wants to have every bit of freedom of loving someone. I don't want a relationship to become about me and I don't want anyone to take care of me as well. It won't be fair on my part cuz I'll need them more than they will need me. and i can't ask anyone to do that i can't even explain to anyone how i feel about all this i often cry at night seeing one of my dreams fade away like ashes do in the wind at the same time i don't want to be lonely that thought really scares me anyway all i know as of now is that i've left the responsibility of that decision on destiny and time i haven't given up on hope as well I still want that dream to come to life and thrive in the reality but I no longer chase it anymore so to end this video I would just like to say that I didn't want to spread any negativity or provoke anyone in doing anything that can be life threatening I didn't want to trigger anyone as well I don't want anyone to feel sorry or empathetic towards me At the same time please don't feel guilty scared and nervous after what I've shared and after what you have heard by sharing my story I only wanted to make people aware it's very important that we talk about our mental health I know there's a lot of people those who don't have a platform or even that kind of support to share about what they go through do consult someone at the earliest and don't wait for the right time cause there isn't a right time get yourself treated and healed early before things go out of control i've tried to share as much as i can when i look back i really realize that these 3 years taught me a lot about myself i'm tackling everything that i had been avoiding for so many years and i guess it's fair now cause I get to fix myself from the roots. I want to start this journey of my life with a clean slate, and that's only going to happen if I let my soul rest in peace. I really need some rest before I can kickstart myself with every bit of energy, confidence and strength that I can gather. Last but not the least, I'll say this that my demons try to drown me. 
but they didn't know i could swim under water if you have come this far along hats off to you i know it's been intense and so give yourself a break anyways i'll see you soon in the next video if you like this one then do like share comment your views and opinions subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell i'll try to post videos as regularly as i can but until then toodles take care be safe and much love